Hello, welcome back. My name is Kweku, if you're new around here, and I'm a pharmacist. Today, I'm briefly going to be reviewing the medication Valsatan, which is marketed under the brand name Diovan here in the States. We're going to dive into its description and uses. We will also take a look at how it works, some side effects, and some precautions or some drug interactions. Hello, little disclaimer. This review is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for medical advice from your physician. So valsartan belongs to a class of medications called angiotensin II receptor antagonists or blockers, sometimes shortened as ARBs or ARBs. They are primarily used in the management of hypertension, heart failure, or myocardial infarction. That is, it is used to reduce the incidence of death or cardiovascular mortality in patients following a heart attack. It may sometimes also be used in diabetic nephropathy. This is an off-label use. That means that it is not FDA approved for that purpose, but it is routinely given to diabetics to slow down the progression of diabetic nephropathy. Now, valsartan works by causing a relaxation of the blood vessels. This it does by blocking the receptors on which a hormone produced by the kidneys, known as angiotensin II, works. Angiotensin II is known to cause constriction of blood vessels. So in effect, in the presence of valsartan, angiotensin II is not able to exert its vasoconstricting effects, leading to a dilation of the blood vessels and consequently a reduction in blood pressure. This same hormone, angiotensin II, also stimulates aldosterone secretion from the adrenal gland. Now, why is this important? This is important because aldosterone causes an increase in salt and water reabsorption into the bloodstream from the kidneys. This, in turn, causes an increase in the blood volume. Now, since blood pressure is typically directly correlated with blood volume, an increase in blood volume increases blood pressure as, as well. That's by blocking the effects of angiotensin II, valsartan decreases aldosterone secretion and consequently leads to a lowering of the blood pressure as well. With respect to side effects, valsartan is generally well tolerated and the side effects are generally mild. During hypertension trials, the incidence of discontinuation of valsartan due to drug-related adverse effects was comparable to the placebo, that is 2.3% versus 2% respectively. In other words, the people discontinuing valsartan compared to those taking the placebo during the trial was just 0.3%, and that is not a whole lot. That obviously does not mean that valsartan is devoid of any side effects at all. The most common reasons for discontinuation of valsartan therapy are headache and dizziness. Headache was reported in more than 1% of hypertensive valsartan-treated patients. Dizziness was, however, observed in about 8% of hypertensive patients receiving 320 mg per day and in 2-4% to of patients receiving 10 to 160 mg per day. So obviously, it's, it makes sense. The higher the dose, the greater the incidence of the side effects, in this particular case, headaches. Hypotension occurring in about 5.5 to 7% was also observed. Hyperkalemia, or an increase in potassium, is a known side effect of valsartan. Back pain occurring in about 3% is also a known side effect. Fatigue occurring in about 2 to 3%. Abdominal pain occurring in about 2%. And a cough, usually a dry cough, occurring in about 0.6 to 2.6% of the people that take valsartan. With respect to the cough though, generally valsartan and members of that class, the, the ARBs, are generally better when it comes to the issue of coughing compared to the ACE inhibitors like the sinopril and benazepril, all those ending in the ILs. So for that reason, it's quite a good choice for the most part when somebody cannot tolerate an ACE inhibitor due to that reason and it's a good substitute to consider in that circumstance. With respect to precautions and drug interactions, the most significant one is potassium supplements. Since I already mentioned that one of the main side effects of valsartan is hyperkalemia or increased potassium, it's generally not a good idea to take any kind of soft substitute or potassium supplements without letting your doctor know because it may add up and cause your levels to go higher than usual. The same is true for some medications, usually diuretics. They are called potassium sparing diuretics. And typical examples include spironolactone and triamterene. So if you're taking any of this concurrently with valsartan, your doctor will typically monitor your potassium levels to make sure that they stay within range. And one of the cardinal signs of high potassium is muscle cramping. So if you experience any 
muscle cramping while you are on valsartan it definitely may be a good idea to let your doctor know so they can check your levels and make sure that your potassium levels are within range also if you have a history of kidney disease these side effects may be more common or you may be more prone to these side effects so that is something to watch out for and have a plan drawn out with your doctor like I mentioned earlier though, valsartan tends to be quite well tolerated and these incidences are relatively rare, but obviously do report any unusual things that you experience while taking valsartan, just like any other medication to your doctor for the appropriate action to be taking. I hope you found this review useful. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and I will catch you on the next video. Thank you.